We're going to turn to God's Word. So if you've got a Bible on your phone or physically, uh, we're going to turn to Acts, and Jill is going to come and read us our reading. Thank you, Jill, very much indeed. The reading comes from the, from the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 8, verses 4 to 25. Acts 8, 4 to 25. Those who had been scattered preached the Word wherever they went. Philip went down to a city in Samaria and proclaimed the Messiah there. When the crowds heard Philip and saw the signs he performed, they all paid close attention to what he said. For with shrieks, impure spirits came out of many, and many who were paralyzed or lame were healed. So there was great joy in that city. Now for some time, a man named Simon had practiced sorcery in the city and amazed all the people of Samaria. He boasted that he was someone great and all the people both high and low gave him their attention and exclaimed, this man is rightly called the great power of God. They followed him because he had amazed them for a long time with his sorcery. But when they believed Philip as he proclaimed the good news of the kingdom of God and the name of Jesus Christ, they were baptized, both men and women. Simon himself believed and was baptized, and he followed Philip everywhere, astonished by the great signs and miracles he saw. When the apostles in Jerusalem heard that Samaria had accepted the word of God, they sent Peter and John to Samaria. When they arrived, they prayed for the new believers that they might receive the Holy Spirit, because the Holy Spirit had not yet come on any of them. They had simply been baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Then Peter and John placed their hands on them, and they received the Holy Spirit. When Simon saw that the Spirit was given at the laying on of the apostles' hands, he offered them money and said, Give me also this ability so that everyone on whom I lay my hands may receive the Holy Spirit. Peter answered, May your money perish with you because you thought you could buy the gift of God with money. You have no part or share in this ministry because your heart is not right before God. Repent of this wickedness and pray to the Lord in the hope that he may forgive you for having such a thought in your heart. For I see that you are full of bitterness and captive to sin. Then Simon answered, Pray to the Lord for me, so that nothing you have said may happen to me. After they had further proclaimed the word of the Lord and testified about Jesus, Peter and John returned to Jerusalem, preaching the gospel in many Samaritan villages. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. As we stand, Heavenly Father, we ask that by your Spirit, you would speak to our hearts by your Word. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, do take a seat. And we're going to come back to that reading that Jill read to us. If you've got it on a Bible or tablet, do have it open. But I I need your help. Children, adults, all of us need to to switch our our minds into, uh, because we need to see what amazes us, okay? So I want you to think, uh, let's start with children. We'll start with the children first. Um, some things that amaze you, they could be the big, the small, the anything from trifle to trees. I don't mind. Um, so children, do you want to stick up a hand and tell us something that amazes you? Okay, Alyssa. Candy floss. Candy floss. We got there. Candy floss. Okay, let me try and write nice and big. So everybody can read. Candy floss. Good one to start us off. Thank you, Alyssa. Children, anyone else? Um, Beth, what do you... How big has Grace grown? So, I'm going to, because I can't write that all in so they all see, Beth. So I'm going to try and put it in one word, okay? Growing. Okay. Fantastic. Right, come on, adults, your turn. What's something that amazes you? June? Flowers. Great, okay. Now we're cooking. Oh, my pen's running out. Flowers. Yes, come on, adults. One more. Yes, winner. 
Sun sets. Now I'm with you. I'm with you. Our house is littered of, with them on of various locations. Okay. Sun sets. Sorry, that's pictures of sun. So it's not actual sun setting in our house before you thought there's some weird like galaxy in our house. Okay. One more. Judith. Oh, sorry, young man. Yes. Shout out loud and loud for me. Sorry, big, big airplanes, good man. Now, if you didn't know what job I used to do, you are my new favorite friend. Airplanes, yes. Particularly when they're going through the sky and you think, how are they staying up? Okay, so here we go, Holy Trinity. James, you can be our adjudicator and official counter because you're much better at maths than I am. We're going to see which amazes you most. Okay, so the only rules of this game, you're allowed one vote. Of all these five things, which amazes you most, you can only choose one. Candy floss, growing, flowers, sunset, or airplanes. Let's start with candy floss. If you want to vote for candy floss, stick your hand up as something that amazes you. It's a firm one, two, three on the floor, James, I think. Should we go three? Three. Okay, growing. If it amazes you, stick your hands up. How many? Oh, that's a few more, James. That's beyond my capacity to count. Ten. Great. Right, that's taken the lead. Ten. Flowers. If flowers amaze you, stick your hand up. The horticultural amongst us. Sixteen. Brilliant. Okay. Sunsets. If sunsets amaze you, that's your choice. Stick your hand up. When are you are allowed to vote for the one that you chose, by the way. If you, the, how many is that, James? Thirteen. Ooh. Okay. Which leaves airplanes. Airplanes. If airplanes amaze you, stick your hands up. And Jackie's going to count and see who didn't vote. No, because she knows the number. That Eleven. So. Da, 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 da. We the scores on the doors are. In last place, we have, can you remember? Candy Floss. In fourth place, we have, oh, it was tight, Growing. Sorry, Beth, Grace is amazing, but they, they thought something else was more amazing. Then in third place, we had Airplanes. And then in second place was Sunsets, which must mean that in first place was uh, Flowers, wasn't it? Is that right? Fantastic. Uh, but actually... Da -da -da. Yeah, that's better. Okay, here we go. Holy Trinity, your most amazing list in first place. It's me. Oh. Okay, it wasn't quite the ecstatic cheer uh, I expected, was it? Okay, well, well perhaps, perhaps we'll cross. You know, in fairness, flowers were your number one, weren't they? Flowers were the most amazing thing there. Uh, and then candy floss last. But here's the thing. Do you actually think you're the most amazing thing? If you're honest, more amazing than flowers, sunsets, aeroplanes, growing candy floss. Is there someone we've missed off this list? Alyssa? We've missed Jesus. Where do you think he should be? He is in heaven, but where on this list? Top, at the top. Good girl. Thank you, Alyssa. See, in our passage today, we're going to meet a choice to be amazed by Jesus or amazed by James. Now, Beth, shall I tell them this story? Because when Beth, Beth was baptized, she got a bit confused and she used to think that my name, James, was Jesus, which is a little bit worrying and confusing as she made promises to follow Jesus, didn't you? You don't want to follow, you don't want to follow James, I promise you. 
But we're going to see today, there's a man called Simon who, who thinks he's number one in the amazing list. As we come into the place of Samaria, he, he's teaching, he's doing all sorts of amazing things. He's doing magic shows galore. I don't know, children, if you're any good at magic, whether you can juggle some balls, do a card trick, or, or whether you can eat fire. Please don't try that at home unless your parents are trained fire eaters. I used to do magic shows. I used to charge one pound entrance to come and watch me uh, tap uh, a magic wand on some cups and make sponge balls appear in the same ones they went into. Funnily enough, no one came to visit. But Simon, did you see as we read that, he was amazing in Samaria. He was number one at the top of the list. He was the one that they all loved to come and see. That is until Philip showed up. And Philip started teaching about Jesus. And then all of a sudden, Simon started to go down the list. Jesus became number one. He was the best thing in town. He was the most amazing thing. Even Simon came to believe in him. He was more amazing than Simon's magic. It's amazing, isn't it, that a, almost a whole town from nowhere, it's even more amazing when you think how we ended last time, that Saul was overseeing the, the persecution of Christians. Stephen had lost his own life. It was bad news to be a Christian in those days. But yet, how amazing places like Samaria are believing in Jesus. Now, how's that happening? Was Philip doing some really cool magic tricks? Was he beating Simon's magic trick? Well, no, because of what happens next. Do you see, in a slightly strange way for us, what happens as the apostles come from Jerusalem? What do they pray for, uh, the, the Christians in Samaria? They pray that they would receive the Spirit. Now, a little sidebar here, if this interests you. If not, just have a mental um, da, 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 pause for a moment. Sometimes people have interpreted this to mean that we could do a baptism like graces and then what we need is someone really super spiritual to come lay hands and get a super duper topping up of the baptism in the Holy Spirit. That's not how baptism and the Spirit seem to work through Acts. When someone believes in Jesus, they receive the Spirit straight away. But here, this is happening to show us of something really important. That they're coming to be amazed by Jesus, not because Philip is really amazing, but because of God's Spirit transforming their lives. It's God's Spirit that's been on work. They even bring in the sort of bigwigs of the church, the apostles, the popes of their day, who come and confer it. That this is God's Spirit, that you really are Christians. You have come to put Jesus at the top of your list to be amazed by him, and to want to follow him. You see, if you're a Christian here today, you could say, I'm so clever. I looked at all the facts. I worked it all out. I've read all the books. I've done it all. But as Christians, we know it's not because James, Simon, Anthony, Des, Leo, anyone is amazing. It's because God's Spirit has been at work in our hearts of transforming our lives but there's a problem isn't there do you see how this story ends you think brilliant this is going to be praise and thanks to God but but look how it ends when Simon verse 18 saw that the spirit was was given at the laying on of hands he offered the money and said give me also this ability so that anyone on whom I lay my hands may receive the Holy Spirit." The magic show Simon has just been crushed a little bit. So what does he need? A new, bigger, better trick. I want that ability to give people the spirit. That would be so amazing. I'd be back at the top of the list. I'd be the most amazing thing in town. But Peter tells him something. May your money perish with you. Verse 22, repent of this wickedness. Say sorry. You see, what Simon hadn't realized that all those other Christians had realized is that he shouldn't be at the top of the list. Whereabouts on the list to James, Simon, you, and every person be? Where do you think? Where do we think, Beth? Near the bottom. Do you know, in fact, we're going to go right for the very bottom. 
If I had a big scroll, I'd unravel it so we were right at the bottom. In fact, I think we may not... We'll, let's go for a big number we may know. One millionth on the bottom of the list. Right at the bottom. Knowing that it's all God's work by his spirit. He needs to say sorry that he's trying to put himself at the top rather than be amazed by Jesus. And children, when you're at school this week and you're learning all lots of amazing facts, when you're finding out amazing things, when you're having big dreams about being air pilots or firemen or all those kind of things, remember who's at the top of the list. It's Jesus. He's the most amazing thing he is. He's the most amazing one that we can follow. And it's all because of his spirit that we can even want to put him at the top. Adults, perhaps for us, we may be like a Simon. We may want to be more amazing than Jesus is. We want to be at the top of the list. And perhaps today we just need to hear the message to Simon of saying sorry, putting ourselves down the bottom, and once again being amazed by who he is. But equally, as we go out into the world, I don't know about you, perhaps your conversations like, it goes something like this. What did you do on Sunday? Well, um, uh, I was in the garden enjoying the weather. Weather's a good topic to talk about as British people, isn't it? You know, we can, it was rainy, sunny, and we kind of ignore the question. But actually, if Jesus is the most amazing thing there is, and he's helped us to see that, we know that the people we live next to, work next to, our friends, our family, it's not going to be how clever I am that I've come up with a really good argument that has four points beginning with P, is backed up by modern science, theological textbooks, and I can do it whilst lounging on a sun lounger. No, it's just as I share Jesus with them, and God's Spirit helps them to see how amazing Jesus is. We can have confidence to share Jesus, to even name Jesus. What did you do on Sunday? I went to church and we heard about Jesus. Having that confidence that God's Spirit may be at work in others, of helping them to have Jesus, not down the bottom, but at the top, to be amazed by him and all that he has done for us. Now that's something to say thank you for, isn't it? So let me pray a prayer of thankfulness as we finish this part of the service. Loving Father, we thank you so much that through your Spirit, you have given us eyes to see how amazing Jesus is. May we be so thankful where we need to say sorry for putting ourselves at the top of the list. Help us to do that. And help us to have confidence to share Jesus with others, knowing it's your spirit at work. We ask in Jesus' name.